Today we're taking a look at the Atlanta Hawks vs New York Knicks match, which is happening on Friday, May 28, 2021, and giving you my betting tips and predictions in general on this game. Welcome back to High Stakes, let's get straight into it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to get notified as soon as we release these sport prediction videos. And if you would like more betting tips and predictions then check out our Patreon in the link down below. Our new Patreon is a way for us to help you improve your chances of making more money. 5 plans are available for each and every one of you. You can get 30 extra betting picks all the way up to 270 extra betting picks per month. Stop wasting hours and hours of your time searching the internet for some fake betting predictions and losing your money because of it. Join High Stakes Patreon now and get the best betting picks and advices instantly. Los Angeles intentionally lost the final two games of the regular season to avoid having to play the Lakers in the opening round of the playoffs. It has not been a good look so far. The Clippers dropped their series opener by 10 points and then had their late rally come up short on Tuesday night. They were outscored by 11 points in the third quarter. What's been more of a challenge is the defensive side of the ball. LA has had the worst defensive efficiency rating of any playoff team, allowing 128.3 points per 100 possessions, and has no answer for a Dallas offense that has absolutely caught fire of late. Patrick Beverly has played just 20.5 minutes per game and could be the answer in extended time, but the answer probably lies with the current players on the roster. This team ranked 8th in defensive efficiency all season long and needs a focused and sustained performance on Friday. It's worth noting here that the team could be without Serge Ibaka, who played just 6 minutes on Thursday. His absence wouldn't be the biggest deal in the world, but it certainly wouldn't help LA's chances. Kawhi Leonard poured in 30 points in the first half and finished the game with 41, but it was not enough to overcome a poor defensive effort. The defensive struggles have been surprising for a team that ranked 4th in team defense during the regular season. Paul George scored 28 points and pulled down 12 rebounds in the loss. Head coach Teron Liu said he is not concerned about losing the first two games of the series at home. There are certainly some concerns from the outside though, such as failing to slow down Dallas' best player. Another concern has been outside shooting. The Clippers led the league with 41% three-point shooting, but they went just 13 of 33 on Tuesday. They tried to stage a late rally, cutting the lead to four points on two occasions, but late free throws did them in. Los Angeles struggled from the perimeter in Game 1 as well, making just 11 three-pointers. Dallas has not won a playoff series since 2011. It can get very close to clinching this series with a win at home on Friday night. The Mavericks are playing with a chip on their shoulder after the Clippers tanked to face them in the first round. They picked up a win in Game 1 and proved that it wasn't a fluke on Tuesday night. All-star Luka Doncic scored 39 points and helped Dallas outshoot the best perimeter shooting team in the NBA. Still, some of the shots that we've seen taken, and made, have been astonishing. Luka Doncic, Kristaps Porzingis and even Tim Hardaway Jr. are all just launching from near the logo without any hesitation at all and sinking the Clippers with every shot. The question here is how sustainable is a 128.3 offensive rating? Well, it's surely not going to stay at that level all series long, and the Mavs aren't going to keep knocking down 50% of their looks from deep, as they have been against the Clippers. In fact, only 55.7% of Dallas attempts are coming from inside the three-point line, and no team has attempted fewer shots from inside 10 feet than the Mavericks, who have averaged 27.5. To suggest there will be a regression here is an understatement. You can't expect a team that relies on the three this heavily to continue to knock down half of the looks they get, regardless of the defense on the other end of the floor you'd bet on every team to cool down in this spot. What do the Dallas Mavericks have to do to get some respect? No one thought they'd win this series and even after winning the first two games in LA, they are two-point underdogs at home. I have been one of the Clippers' biggest supporters, saying they and the Bucks and Lakers were the three best teams, but they choked last year and they are doing even worse this year. 
at some point you have to think something is wrong on that team. Something's off with the chemistry or in the locker room or something. Otherwise, why would you get rid of a successful coach in Doc Rivers? I'm done with them, though. At some point, you have to see the writing on the wall. Doncic added five three-pointers of his own and Dallas went 18 of 34 from beyond the arc as a team. The Mavericks were raining triples on Sunday too, hitting 17 threes in the series opener. They took a 13-point lead in the fourth quarter before having to hold off a late rally. Josh Richardson knocked down four straight free throws in the final minute of the game. The Mavericks are now 8-2 in their last 10 games, averaging 117.8 points per contest. They will benefit from relaxed COVID-19 restrictions that allow them to have thousands more fans than Los Angeles allowed at the Staples Center. Tim Hardaway Jr. added 28 points for the Mavericks, while Kristaps Porzingis had 20. Hardaway drilled a playoff career-high six three-pointers. My first betting advice for that game is to pick Dallas plus two. The LA Clippers have been the biggest disappointment of the playoffs this year, and they were probably the biggest disappointment last year, getting knocked out in the second round. They lost their first two games of the series against the fifth-seeded Mavericks at home, which puts them behind the eight ball to say the least. The Los Angeles Clippers are desperate to find their footing in the series and avoid falling into a 3-0 series deficit after getting stopped by the Mavericks in a 127-121 loss in Game 2. Kawhi Leonard poured in 30 points in the first half to finish with 41 points on 14 of 21 shooting. Paul George added 28 points, 12 rebounds and 6 assists on 12 of 22 shooting while Reggie Jackson chipped in with 15 points off the bench but no other player finished in double figures. As a team, the Clippers shot 53% from the field and 13 of 33 from the three-point line as they poured in 40 points in the second quarter to take the lead into halftime, only to surrender control back to the Mavericks in the third quarter where they were outscored by 30 to 19. Marcus Morris finished with just 9 points before fouling out while Rajon Rondo played just 19 minutes off the bench. They are coming off a 127-121 loss to the Mavericks on Tuesday in a game that was a must-win. Now they really face a must-win scenario, down 2-0. Kawhi Leonard came to play, scoring 41 points with 6 rebounds, and so did Paul George, who had 28 points and 12 rebounds. But the Clippers got zip from anyone else and the defense couldn't stop Luka Doncic. The only other Clipper in double figures was Reggie Jackson. When you compare rosters, it's no comparison. The Clippers look like the superior team. But someone forgot to tell the Mavericks that. The Mavericks took a 2-0 series lead on Tuesday over the Clippers with a 127-121 win in LA. But then again, only one team has Luka Doncic and he was once again the best player on the floor with 39 points, 7 rebounds and 7 assists. The Dallas Mavericks will be looking to take a commanding 3-0 series lead after beating the Clippers in their own building for the second time. Luka Doncic was unstoppable as he led the team with 39 points, 7 rebounds and 7 assists on 16 of 29 shooting. Tim Hardaway Jr. added 28 points with 5 assists while Kristaps Porzingis chipped in with 20 points, 3 steals and 2 blocks while playing great defense down the stretch. As a team, the Mavericks shot a sizzling 58% from the field and 18 of 34 from the three-point line as they followed the lead of Doncic who looked to be toying with the Clippers down the stretch against every defender the Clippers threw at him. My second betting advice for that game is to pick under 219. Good luck to all of you. That's it for this video. Stay tuned and stay safe for the next betting tips and advice.